Welcome to Saundersfoot in Pembrokeshire, Wales for the 2022 World Rowing Coastal Championships and Beach Sprint Finals. We thought we'd give you a little bit of a tour to show you the setup here for everybody who can't make it to the venue this week. Now to put on a Coastal Championships and a Beach Sprint Finals, you can imagine the amount of work that has to go into laying out the venue in a sensible way to make the logistics work perfectly. First part is making sure you can store all of the hundreds of boats that you need for all of the hundreds of athletes that are gonna be, gonna be competing. So this is the, one of the boat parks, there are a couple of them, and you can see a few of the quads here, a few of the doubles and the solos racked up over there, a variety of different boats with different hull shapes to make sure that the athletes have a little bit of a selection as to what sort of boat that they want to race in. Because bear in mind, for the coastals, they're racing four kilometers, and then the A finals, if they make it into the A finals, it's a six kilometer race. The conditions here keep changing. So at the earlier part of today um, and the early part of the weekend, we might see uh, quite a lot of wind. And the forecasts show sunshine for the rest and hopefully less wind. But as you can imagine, with the, with the coastal conditions here, the waves have been changing and you might want to wave piercing bow. You might not want to wave piercing bow, depending on what you're trying to do. So a little bit of selection always goes a long way when it comes to these athletes preparing for their endurance event at the coastals. But when it comes to the beach sprints on the second weekend, they'll need to be considering how they're going to land one of these boats onto a beach very, very quickly and make sure that they have a safe landing. So a variety of different boats stored here in the boat park. They have to carry these boats, either carry them or wheel them on one of the boat trolleys down this way towards the harbour area. You can see we're in the um, in the shadow of the sailing the sailing club here in Saundersfoot. So great to have a lot of space for um, for them to store their sailboats, etc. But you, they'll take their boats on a boat trolley down this way towards the slipway where they'll take the boat down onto down onto the beach. A huge amount of infrastructure has been put up. You can see there's some great spectators entertainment areas over there. They've got a stage set up, a few bars, and a whole load of rowing style merchandise shops to make sure that everybody is well kitted for the variety of conditions that you can experience here. Um, we've got the World Rowing Merchandise Store here. A couple of the boat makers have tents set up. Um, really, really important to have a good relationship with the boat makers here for the Coastal Championships because anything can go wrong and you want to make sure that you've got your boat maker there to fix anything that might go wrong. A particular problem that we experience on just about any coastal then is the fins. The fins keep snapping off. So I think the boat, boat makers have had to learn a very hard lesson in, um, in bringing plenty of spare fins to the event so they can keep replacing them. And the obvious reason that they snap off is somebody puts a boat down onto the sand and they just snap off the bottom. But um, here on the beach, we've got a 300 meter tidal range. So for the, we'll see this in a second. For the course of the, the racing, as the tide comes up and down, just to put that into perspective, a 300 meter tidal range is per minute, the tide is either coming in or going out one meter per minute. So you blink, turn your back, and suddenly it's moved 10 meters up the beach. Now, if we look across here, you can see we've got a great big screen set up so that we can keep people abreast of the results, progress in the racing. And then down here, you can't see the beach because it's covered in, covered in water at the moment because the tides come in and it's high tide right now. But when we start out the day, when we started out the day on the day one, the tide was all the way down at the bottom. And uh, that meant taking the boat all the way down to the start. And then as the day progressed, they had to move the start up the beach ever so gradually to the point that we can see here, where you can see just the tiniest sliver of beach remaining, and they'd have to line up up to 20 boats all next to each other, ready for a mass start. And we can see that there's plenty of boat makers tents down there because, as I said, if you've got any technical issues, they need to be able to fix those technical issues as quickly as possible before racing's interrupted. The 4K course takes place out there, and uh, you might be able to see in the distance some of the boy markers. It's essentially an anti-clockwise loop finishing back over here by the harbour wall. The 6K loop is just an extension of turning point two, which is right out there in the distance. They're pushing that back so that it's 2K further out to make a 6K loop instead of a 4K loop. So a uh, beautiful place here in Saundersfoot. Absolutely loads going on and the crowds here locally have turned up in force. We had, you know, the likes of Saundersfoot Primary School are showing up and lots of the locals. And it's a, an absolutely beautiful venue when the weather's kind to us. So uh, hope you've enjoyed our brief venue tour. My name's Peter O'Hanlon. It's been a pleasure. I'm one of World Rowing's commentators and uh, 
I'm sure we'll have more to tell you about not only the location but the racing as uh, the weekend for the coastals and the beach sprints gets underway.